Hi students, welcome to session 1 of Air Around Us. Students, in today's session, we will learn about air and composition of air. So let us start with today's interesting session. Students, we have learned that all living things require air. They need air. But have you ever seen air? Well, you might not have seen air, but surely you must have felt its presence in many ways. You notice it when the leaves of the trees rustle or the clothes hanging on a clothesline way. Even pages of an open book begin fluttering when the fan is switched on. So, the moving air makes it possible to move all such things. Even it makes it possible for you to fly your kite. Do you remember winnowing method? Winnowing method is used to separate the sand and sawdust and it is more effective in moving air. You may have noticed that during storm the wind blows at a very high speed and it may even uproot trees and blow off the rooftops. Students, have you ever played with a firki? Yes. My, well, if you hold the stick of the firki and place it in a different direction in an open area and if you move it a little back and forth, you will observe that it rotates. So what makes a firki rotate? Moving air, isn't it? Yes. Have you seen a weathercock? Yes, it shows the direction in which the air is moving at that place. Even if you close your fist, what do you have in it? Nothing? No, that's wrong. Now you cannot see air. And that is why you say that there is nothing when we close our fist. But actually there is air in it. So now, let us see our introductory slide and learn more about air. Yes students, all living organisms on the earth need air to survive. And there is a thick blanket of air called the atmosphere which surrounds our earth. So it is this layer that extends up to many kilometers above the surface of the earth. So it is the atmosphere which surrounds our earth. And all living organisms on the earth need air to survive. So basically students, air cannot be seen but it can be felt when it moves. Like if we make a boat, an aeroplane and a pinwheel out of paper and if we place the boat in water and blow air on it, what will happen? If we take a paper aeroplane outside and try to fly it, does it fly? If we take a paper pinwheel outside does it rotate? Yes. Wind helps our paper boat, aeroplane and pinwheel move. So basically air when moves help lightweight things move and this moving air is called wind. So basically moving air helps us in many ways. Like here you can see the beautiful picture of a windmill, an aeroplane and a cute girl holding pinwheel which is made out of paper. So wind helps this paper boat, aeroplane, pinwheel and windmill move. Can it also help big ships, sailboats and hot air, hot air balloons move? Amazingly it can. So, there are many things that move with the help of wind. 
Now you know that air is present all around us, and air is also present in things which seem to be empty. And this can be proved by discussing a very simple activity. I would like to discuss a very simple activity that even an empty thing seems to have nothing in it. But then too there is air. Now if we take an empty bottle and if we open its cap and we immerse, immerse the bottle in water with the open end inside the water. Does the wash, this water rush into the bottle or inside the bottle? And if we tilt the bottle, what will we see? Does water rush inside the bottle again? Well, if we observe, if we immerse the bottle in water with the open end inside the water, we will see bubbles at the mouth of the bottle. And this is because there is air inside the bottle which comes out on tilting the bottle and before tilting water does not enter the bottle as all the space inside the bottle is taken up by air but as we tilt the bottle air rushes out from the opening and water rushes in to fill the empty space so this concludes that air occupies space even an empty thing as air. Even there is presence of air in an object that looks empty. Now that was all about introduction to air. Students can you think what air is made up of? No? Then let us learn about the composition of air. Yes. Students, until the 18th century, people thought that air was just one substance. But experiments have proved that air is a mixture of several gases. Several gases means it contains mainly nitrogen, oxygen and remaining percent includes carbon dioxide, noble gases, water vapor, dust particles and traces of other gases. So it is this in which air actually air is comprised of. So let us now study about each of the gases in detail. Yes. Students, as we discussed that air comprises of mainly nitrogen and oxygen. So here you can see a beautiful pie chart which shows the composition of air. The red one, the red color indicates the percentage of nitrogen in the atmosphere. The blue one, the blue color indicates the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere and rest, rest or the remaining gases are 1%. So students, air contains about 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen. And you will be very amazed to know that oxygen in air supports burning whereas nitrogen does not. And we can prove this by discussing one very simple activity. If we take a candle and if we place it in a big bowl and after that if we fill the bowl with some water, after that we light the candle and we cover it with an inverted glass. So what will we observe? Students, the candle keeps burning for some time. But after some time the candle blows out. The water level of the bowl decreases after the candle is blown out. So this concludes that oxygen helps in burning because when the oxygen inside the glass is used up the candle is put out 
also the space occupied by oxygen inside the inverted glass becomes empty and water rises up to occupy this space thus the major part of air left is nitrogen which does not support burning hence we can say that oxygen in air supports burning whereas nitrogen does not i hope you understand so generally we think that air is lightweight because we do not feel the weight of air it is true that same volume of air is lighter than liquid or solids but amazingly there are many kilograms of air above us pushing down with its incredible weight so how amazing it is means air occupies space and air has weight too it is not massless so this was about nitrogen and oxygen let us see other gases that comprises of 1% in the atmosphere yes carbon dioxide students air contains about 0.03% of carbon dioxide and we know that plants and animals as well as human beings they take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide during respiration and during burning too carbon dioxide is produced but besides these gases water vapor is also present in air air contains varying amounts of water vapor depending on the weather of a place now you have learned about the water cycle in which the sun heats the water in oceans and seas and this water evaporates and forms water vapor we can even verify the presence of water vapor in air by observing wet clothes which are drying on a clothes line but where does the water from these wet clothes disappear yes the water in clothes forms water vapor and disappears into the air so we saw that nitrogen and oxygen carbon dioxide and water vapor they are constituents of air other than these dust and smoke is also present in air now students have you ever seen sun rays entering a dark room have you ever noticed tiny particles in the sun rays well if you have then you must know that these are dust particles because air contains dust and it also contains smoke but how do dust and smoke enter air well the smoke which is released by industries factories and by vehicles and many other ways it mixes with the air it enters the atmosphere so these are some ways of how dust and smoke enter the atmosphere right so that was all about the composition of air students now that we know the constituents of air the composition of air we will learn how air is important for the survival of all living beings on this planet so in next session we will learn about air that supports life in many ways till then enjoy have a nice time thank you students